I've been playing around a lot on this Remarkable 2 over the past month now, I think it's been. And this thing's fantastic. It's phenomenal. It's changing the entire game when it comes to writing. I'm trying to work on a much lengthier fiction book, which is different from what I normally do. Uh, I've self-published in both poetry, some poetry prose, and I've also published nonfiction. So I've played around with all that, but I really want to get into the world of traditional publishing or at least like explore that more. And I'm trying to write fiction. So it's an adventure. I'm learning a lot. I'm going to share with you as I go. I have a new newsletter, so two newsletters and a new website. I'm going to link all of that down below, goldbunnymedia.com. You can find it all there. The Remarkable is like where it's at. For me, The Remarkable just seemed to have everything that I wanted in a really a really simple way where like I didn't feel like there would be a lot of distractions, there would be a big learning curve. Like it's been pretty easy to navigate so far and it just allows me to take time away from my computer. Normally when I was writing, like I would get a lot done, but even just to write like a few thousand words, I'd be on my desktop and it was so easy for me to kind of like bop around and check other things. It was just kind of distracting. So what I'm trying to say is The Remarkable has been fantastic for that. And what I would recommend is figuring out what you want first, really knowing what you want. When it comes down to the hardware, the simple things, what you need to buy. So I'm going to run through that first really quick. And then I'm just going to go through some details of what surprised me so far about the Remarkable and sort of how to use the basic function. So basic functionality, surprises along the way. Okay, let's, let's go. So first you have options. Right? The first option that you get with your Remarkable is what kind of pen or stylus you want to use. This is gonna, my back is gonna hurt by the end of this. Okay, now we're comfy. What stylus you want to use? I got their fancy pen. They have a non fancy option and a fancy option. The only real difference between the two is that the fancier option, aka the more expensive version, you level up, you get an eraser. The eraser is it's awesome to have. It's very nice because you can just flip over the pen instead of having to click the button, use the stylus as you normally would as the eraser, and then click back into text when you're ready to do that. That's fine. It's really not a hassle. So if you don't want to spend the extra money, by all means, go for that basic pen, pencil for the Remarkable 2. For me, I felt like this was worth the splurge because I'm probably gonna a number of times flip the pen over thinking it's an eraser if I'm like in the mode of writing and it's not an eraser, that's gonna annoy me. I have to click the button, right? So it's silly. It's a very silly trick that they're doing. I'm just gonna put it out there. It's a trick. They're getting you to pay a lot more. I am matching this background right now. Like this is, a, I am, I am a ghost. But they're getting it, getting you to buy into this, which is fine. It's just that, like, you know, these are the things you have to think about when you are purchasing this pen. Like, is that going to annoy you to the point where, like, it's worth it to spend the extra whatever it is? I'll try to pop it up on the screen. So that's your first choice. Which pen are you getting? I got the fancy stylus. I'm happy with the fancy stylus. Then this, this you might have to think a little bit more about, okay? The exterior let's just call it like the chassis okay it's the chassis of your beautiful new product do you want the full-on type folio the type pad folio which is what i got which i'm happy i got this but it is a lot more expensive than the other two options the other two options would be just a folio without the type pad so you open and close it uh, this is leather, open and shut, but it does kind of give a little bit of protection to the surface of your tablet. Also, they have a sleeve. Sleeve, you just pop it in, and I think it's a different material, so I want to say that that one's more like a felty feel. Maybe it's like a wool, maybe it's like a... I don't know, but it's patty. It's kind of like a nice little sleeve. You can just tuck it right in, but keep in mind you can't don't have that easy access to just like open it. You have to take it out of its, you know, little home. And that might be annoying to some people, but it is significantly cheaper. Those are your options um, for me. I like this. 
what I like about it is that it's very sleek. It's very simple. It's not clunky. You're not like folding things around like an accordion. It's just real simple. And then when you don't want to use the keypad, when you're done typing, you just want to write like it's a notebook. Boom, done. You're writing. Sorry, it's plugged in. You're writing. It's really, really nice. Like you don't even know it's there. It's so sleek. This is a chiclet style keyboard. It's pretty traditional in terms of what it offers you. It's very nice how it feels um, when you're typing. I've said in a prior video, it reminds me of the Surface tablet a little bit. It reminds me a little bit of the Surface tablet in the sense that it has that, you know, simple chiclet style, but it's like smooth on top and it's just nice. It's a nice feel like you really can kind of cruise with your writing. I cruise with my writing when I am on this keyboard. It's nice. It's sleek. It's what I want. I love a chiclet. This is my jam. Everything about this type folio is made for me, I feel. It's really nice. So I would recommend that you think about those options. Think about those three different options. Having some protection for this is a good move. It's you know, made out of plastics that feel like glass. It's a nice feeling. It's very good quality. I would be surprised if it like easily gets messed up this, in terms of like the screen. It's still helpful on any hardware, on any tech to get some type of thing to keep it protected. With that said, I think they do have some sort of warranty plan. If you're interested in that, you can check that out too. And then those are, you know, kind of your accessory options. Now for the main option, the main thing that you're gonna wanna consider, uh, w which tablet you want. They actually offer two, this is why it's called the Remarkable 2. And the main differences are that the Remarkable 2, they just brought in a lot more functionality. Like for me, it was a no brainer to go with the Remarkable 2 because of all of the things I can accomplish, both with the new stylus, with the eraser, but also all of the kind of options that I get with this, I don't think that everything came with the first remarkable one thing i did have an issue with was in the beginning i tried to connect to their cloud and it actually wasn't uploading my documents like it synced right away but then for a day i was having issues with it syncing i connected to their customer service they did a phenomenal job explaining everything to me for a lot of people they'll have you like reset your wi-fi make sure it's not that which it might just be your own connection in this case it was my laptop they said try it on a different device whatever they'll have you go through the motions um i had a specific issue where i tried it on a different browser that's right it was a different browser on the same device and on the new browser it worked now i just go through the same browser every time it's no issue all of my files can get uploaded seamlessly um, you have to pay for that service at the end of the year you start paying i think it's a monthly fee if that's something that's like a no can do for you you just might want to consider it because once that year is up you don't get free use of that connectivity to the cloud anymore but they do save everything for you and everything auto saves like on the device which is really really nice to have Oh yeah, and back to the so the original Remarkable versus the Remarkable 2. There might be some differences in terms of what they offer in terms of connectivity, storage, cloud op opportunities, or maybe not, but you probably want to look into that first. For me, like being able to even just, this sounds so silly, but you have, have an option here to email your stuff back to yourself just in email. If you don't want to go into their cloud service, if you don't want to pay for their cloud service, you can email, say I wrote five pages for my new book and I wanted to email that back to myself. I can do that, go into my Gmail, get that document. You can either do the handwritten version or convert type to text, which is my favorite feature of this device. You get that text version of it. Now keep in mind, this is super, super important. I figured this out the hard way. You can choose what the page layout is. You have the option of having a plain page, ruled, lined paper. When I was doing it on ruled paper, so I was writing on ruled paper, I liked that experience, I still do. When I emailed that to myself and before I emailed it, I turned my writing into like a typed text using their automated function which is fantastic you can just convert your 
writing into two typed text, which is great. But when it came into my email and I, I had that PDF and then I was like, oh, I'll just copy and paste the text. Here's the kicker. You're not able to do it if it's on these like weird formatted backgrounds, like the ruled paper or the grid paper. There may be a way around this. I'm not aware of it. Whenever I wanna do that convert to text option, which is great to have, make sure it's on a blank template, not the ruled template, before you go to email that to yourself or upload it to the cloud because that converted text as a PDF document, you're unable to manipulate it, copy and paste it into a Word document. So what I do is I just have it on um, the blank template, send it to myself, and then I copy and paste that text, put it right in my Word doc, put it right into Scrivener, wherever I'm writing my book, like collecting all of the work for my book, because I don't collect it on here, because I don't know what's gonna happen to this. I like to have multiple backups. I like to be able to back up you know, my manuscript on a hard drive. I like to be able to save it to the cloud. Different options for that, different ways of doing it. Everyone has their own thing. Me personally, I just like making sure it can be backed up in multiple places at once. So because of that, love the options that this affords me. I can go to the cloud, I can go to email, I can go to Google Drive, love it. OneDrive if you have it, love that. And I just make sure that I'm always saving, I'm always uploading, I'm always sending it to the cloud or to my email. I'm always keeping track of those things and doing it in a way where it's consistent, it looks the same every time. My version control is super clean. This is really important for writers, documenting the same thing every time with the date or a new version or maybe the chapter you're on, the scene you're in, whatever it is, Figure that out beforehand so that all of your files are manageable. They look alike. They live together seamlessly, harmoniously. The Remarkable 2 can help you get really organized, but you need to kind of figure out the quirks first, like I did, and then plan around it. And when you do, it's the best writing buddy you could have. I love it. One great thing about the Remarkable 2 is that you can choose what writing instrument you'd like to use. Now, keep in mind, I have worn this nub down like almost as far as it can go. So I will have to replace that soon. They do provide you with options. The ballpoint pen and the mechanical pen are both my favorite for writing longer form. I'll show you an example. And then what I love the most is this calligraphy option, this. highlighter with different color options that show up when you upload to the computer and a marker again different colors paintbrush love the remarkable too and a couple more tips and tricks for the remarkable too i mentioned that there's a highlighter option which you can choose different colors for that will show up when it's uploaded as a pdf which is super cool but the best part about this is that it not only highlights your written text but it will automatically adjust to neatly fit around your typed text or converted to type text when you select highlighter mode with the stylus. So you might have noticed how even if your line is a little bit off, it will locate the text that you're trying to select and neatly wrap around it as if it was highlighted in a Word doc, which is pretty cool. So then I wondered, does the eraser function in the same way? And the answer to that is no. It does not, sadly. I tried to flip the pen over and use the eraser mechanism to erase typed text, and it won't work that way, which is not a big deal. Like You can either use the built-in keyboard or the type folio to manually delete or to select the text and move it around with the crop tool. There's plenty of ways around. There's just plenty of ways to um, erase that typed text, to delete it. But I just wanted to point it out in case you were like wondering if it's possible. Um, okay, so there's honestly so much more to explore here from files and folders to troubleshooting and what you can actually use the Remarkable for. I will get into all of this in later videos. I'm so excited to share it all for you. But for now, I hope you got a few things out of my one month Remarkable check-in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out that newsletter. I'm super excited about it. And I'll see you so soon.